What's up, Photocracy users? This is Derek Howes from DHFDNS.com, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make seven quick recipes that'll take less than 1% of your day. So let's get to it. If you guys don't know what the Arnold 1% challenge is, basically it's a challenge being held by Photocracy.com and Arnold Schwarzenegger that challenges you to use 1% of your day to become a healthier you. I'll post a link to the actual challenge in the description box below where you can earn points and potentially win prizes. But the biggest prize you're going to win is that you're going to become a healthier person. So there's three main things we're going to focus on when making these recipes. One, we're going to make them as quick as possible in less than 1% or 15 minutes of your day. Two, we're going to keep the cost as low as possible. And three, we're not going to compromise the taste. The first recipe I'm going to show you guys is protein cereal, which is more of a think outside the box type of recipe, and who doesn't love cereal? The first ingredient you're going to add in is 1 cup or 8 ounces of unsweetened vanilla almond milk. If you can't find or don't like almond milk, you can use regular milk or any other milk substitute that you prefer. 1 scoop or 30 grams of protein powder. The flavor you use will be the flavor of your milk, so make sure you use a good tasting protein powder. Before you add in your cereal, you want to make sure that you mix your protein powder with your milk. If your protein powder doesn't mix easy, use a shaker bottle or blender to mix it before you put it into your bowl. And last, one serving of cereal or granola. So there's your protein cereal. It only takes about two minutes to make. As for the calories with the ingredients that I use, there's 381, 9 grams of fat, 43 grams of carbs, and 32 grams of protein. One thing that I do want to mention before I continue on is that this video is just to give you guys some quick recipe ideas. If some of these recipes are too high calorie or too low calorie, then you can pretty much tweak all of them. For example, if you want less carbs in the protein cereal recipe, just cut your cereal serving in half. Or if you want more protein, add another half scoop of protein powder to your recipe. Moving on, the second recipe I'm going to show you guys is protein oatmeal, also known as proats. The first thing we're going to do is make our oatmeal. So take out a microwavable safe bowl and put in half a cup or 40 grams of rolled oats into it, a third a cup of water and two-thirds a cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk. You could also use regular milk or any other milk substitute that you prefer. Now microwave your oatmeal for two minutes. The most important part of this recipe is to make sure you add in the rest of your ingredients while your oatmeal is still hot. One scoop or 30 grams of protein powder. I'm using chocolate, but you can pretty much use any flavor protein powder as long as it tastes good. It also doesn't matter whether you use casein, soy, egg, or like I'm using whey protein. Two tablespoons or 10 grams of cocoa powder. A lot of people think cocoa powder has a ton of sugar in it. It actually doesn't have any sugar in it at all and two grams of fiber per serving. One tablespoon or 16 grams of peanut butter. And that's it, now just go ahead and mix everything together. So there is your protein oatmeal. It only takes around three minutes to make. As far as the calories go in the whole recipe, there's 434, 14 grams of fat, 40 grams of carbs, 10 grams of fiber, and 37 grams of protein. One quick tip I wanna throw out there for this recipe is if you can find instant sugar-free, fat-free pudding, one to two servings of the flavor of your choice will make this recipe even better. The third recipe I'm gonna show you guys is a protein shake recipe. You don't need protein powder for this. It's great if you're on the go, especially in the morning. The first thing you're gonna do is take out either a shaker bottle or a blender. I prefer using a shaker bottle in this recipe just because it's easier, there's less to clean up, and it's one of those recipes where I wanna make really quick and not have to deal with anything else. The first ingredient we're gonna add in is 3 fourths a cup or six ounces of unsweetened vanilla almond milk. You can also use regular milk or any other milk substitute that you prefer. 12 tablespoons or 184 grams of pasteurized liquid egg whites, which is around 3 fourths a cup. And yes, pasteurized liquid egg whites are perfectly fine to drink. One tablespoon or 16 grams of peanut butter. 
two tablespoons or 11 grams of a chocolate mix. You don't have to use Ovaltine, I just prefer it. Two tablespoons or 10 grams of cocoa powder. And half a cup to a cup of ice. Now there's two tips I have for you guys in this recipe. One, if you have protein powder, you can add half a scoop to a scoop to this recipe to get more protein. And two, you can add some instant coffee to this recipe to get that extra boost. I need a little boost right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon of instant coffee in. Depending on the brand of instant coffee you buy, one tablespoon will be around 75 to 100 milligrams of caffeine. Once all of your ingredients are in your shaker, shake it up. And there is your protein shake. It only takes about two minutes to make. As for the calories in the whole shake, there's 304, 12 grams of fat, 22 grams of carbs, and 27 grams of protein. So those first three recipes I showed you guys can be considered our breakfast recipes. The next four recipes I'm gonna show you guys can be made for either lunch or dinner. The fourth recipe I'm gonna show you guys is my version of tuna and rice. It's really quick and absolutely delicious. First things first, take out your tuna and drain it. After you drain your tuna, take out a bowl. The amount of tuna you use is completely up to you. I'm using two five ounce cans of Chunk Light. One other thing is, a lot of people ask me the type of tuna that I prefer, and my answer to them is always the type that's on sale. Next thing we're gonna do is make our rice. Uncle Ben's makes these 90 second brown rice packets that come in a ton of different flavors and only cost around a dollar. If you can't find Uncle Ben's, other companies make these as well. Uncle Ben's is just one of the more popular ones where I live. Tear the top off and microwave it for 90 seconds. There's two cups in this bag. I only use one cup or 141 grams in this recipe. One tablespoon of olive oil. And two tablespoons or 30 grams of salsa. Mix everything together. There is your tuna and rice. It only takes around three or four minutes to make. As for the calories in the whole recipe, there's 545, 21 grams of fat, 44 grams of carbs, and 45 grams of protein. If you wanna cut down on the sodium in this recipe, rather than buying one of the flavors, just buy the regular brown rice. The regular brown rice only has 30 milligrams of sodium in the whole bag. Two cheap things I think everybody should have in their kitchen. One, a digital scale. This thing is extremely durable. I've had mine forever. It does grams and ounces, comes in a ton of different colors, and it only costs around $25 shipped. And two, a good shaker bottle that doesn't leak. I've had blender bottles for around five or six years now that still don't leak. They also have measurements on the side of all of the blender bottles. You can pick these items up at pretty much any home goods store, but I will post links to them in my description below. The fifth recipe I'm gonna show you guys are some really quick garlic turkey burgers. The first thing you're gonna do is take out a large mixing bowl and put your lean ground turkey into it. As for how much we're using, 1.3 pounds or 20.8 ounces. I'm using 93.7. You can also double or even triple this recipe. One large whole egg. And one large egg white. A fourth a teaspoon of lemon and pepper. Half a teaspoon of garlic salt. One teaspoon of Italian seasoning. One and a half teaspoons of minced garlic. Or three cloves of regular garlic. If you wanted to have some spice to it, you can add two teaspoons or 10 grams of a chili garlic sauce. If you don't have or can't find this, you could also add two teaspoons or 10 grams of sriracha. The company that makes sriracha is actually the same company that makes this chili garlic sauce. One third a cup or 30 grams of whole wheat breadcrumbs. Whether you use seasoned ones or not is completely up to you. Two tablespoons or 10 grams of grated Parmesan cheese. And last, take out and chop one third a cup of red onion. Add the one third a cup of chopped red onion to your mix. If you don't like onions, you don't have to add it. Wash your hands and then we're just gonna mix everything together with one of them. 
To save some time, before you sheep your burgers, take out a large stovetop pan, put your burner on medium, spray some non-stick cooking spray into your pan, and let it heat up. A quick tip before we shape our burgers is if you wet your hands a little bit beforehand, your mix isn't going to stick to them as bad. So now, just shape your burgers. However big or small you want to make them is completely up to you. That's how big I make mine. Once your pan heats up, put your turkey burgers on and cook them for 3 to 4 minutes a side. After three to four minutes aside, or however long you like your burgers cooked for, go ahead and take them off. So there are your garlic turkey burgers. They only take around eight to ten minutes to make, and depending on how much you eat, you'll have enough for a couple days. As far as the calories go in the whole recipe, there's 1,082, 52 grams of fat, 24 grams of carbs, and 132 grams of protein. So if you make four burgers like I did, there's 273 calories a burger, 13 grams of fat, 6 grams of carbs, and 33 grams of protein. Since these recipes are all about saving time, if you want some extra carbs, I would either use some of that Uncle Ben's 90 second brown rice that I showed you guys before, or simply use some bread. Just make smart decisions. I personally like this Arnold double protein bread. It's absolutely delicious and we're doing the Arnold 1% challenge, so you gotta like the Arnold name. A lot of people have trouble getting fiber in their diet and it's extremely important, so I thought I'd show you guys three quick and cheap ways to get some more in. One, chia seeds, which in one tablespoon or 12 grams only have 60 calories and five grams of fiber. And you can pretty much put these in anything, your yogurt, oatmeal, cottage cheese, or even your protein shake. Two, flaxseed, which in two tablespoons or 13 grams has four grams of fiber. This is great to cook with and even goes well in protein shakes. And three, as I mentioned before, cocoa powder, which in one tablespoon or five grams only has 10 calories and two grams of fiber. Pretty much anything you want to add a chocolate flavor to, cocoa powder will go well in. It's also great to cook with as well. The sixth recipe I'm going to show you guys is hummus tuna. The first thing you're gonna do is take out a bowl and then drain one can of tuna. Add your drained can of tuna into the bowl. I'm using chunk white and there's four ounces or 112 grams per can. If one can isn't enough, then you can double or even triple this recipe. A fourth a cup or 56 grams of fat-free cottage cheese. If you don't like the taste of cottage cheese, I promise you that you can't taste it at all. One teaspoon of minced garlic, half a teaspoon of lemon and pepper, two tablespoons or 28 grams of hummus. You can use whatever flavor of hummus you want. I've used them all and personally my favorite is roasted red pepper. And now mix everything together. So there's your hummus tuna. It only takes about three minutes to make. As far as the calories go in the whole recipe, there's 242, six grams of fat, 8 grams of carbs and 39 grams of protein. It tastes great as is, but I usually like to add some extra carbs in, so I'll either put it in a sandwich or over some Ritz crackers. Now if I'm really in a rush and I don't have time to make anything or I'm out and I need to buy something, my protein bar of choice are Quest Bars. If you've never had a Quest Bar, there's a ton of different flavors. They're low in sugar, around 20 grams of protein per bar, and absolutely delicious. You can probably find them locally pretty much anywhere, but I will post a link down below to them. The seventh and last recipe I'm going to show you guys is my really quick stovetop garlic chicken. The first thing you're going to do is take out a large stovetop pan, turn your burner on medium high heat, add in three tablespoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of minced garlic or four cloves of garlic, stir your garlic into your oil, and then let that heat up while you cut your chicken. Take out two pounds or 32 ounces of chicken breast, trim the fat off, and then chop your chicken breast into little pieces so that they're about that big. Once you finish cutting your chicken, add it in. Once you add your chicken in, you wanna keep stirring it around for five to eight minutes. 
After five to eight minutes, turn your burner on medium, add in half a teaspoon of onion powder and half a teaspoon of garlic salt. Mix those in and cook for another one to three minutes. The only thing you have to be careful with in this recipe is that if your stove gets too hot, oil will tend to splatter everywhere and that's the last thing you want to happen. So if it does do that, just reduce your heat a bit. There is your quick stovetop garlic chicken. It only takes around eight to 10 minutes to make. As far as the calories go in the whole recipe, there's 1,437, 49 grams of fat, zero grams of carbs, and 249 grams of protein. So if you make four meals out of this, there's only around 359 calories a serving, 12 grams of healthy fats, zero grams of carbs, and 62 grams of protein. And if you wanna to top this with something, while you're cooking it, you could be making your rice pasta or quinoa to cut down on time. As for how I prepare my vegetables when I'm in a rush, this is all that I do. Take out a microwavable safe container, put however many vegetables you want into it, add one to two ounces of water, Put a cover or piece of saran wrap over the top. And rather than seal your top, you want to leave one of your corners open. After that, throw your container in the microwave and microwave them for however long the back of your bag says to. Then I like to top mine with some lemon and pepper, garlic salt, and of course, sriracha. All right guys, that about wraps up this video. If you had enough time to watch it, then you also had enough time to prep all your meals for the day. So there's absolutely no excuses. I just want to thank you guys for watching. If you haven't checked out Photocracy yet, go ahead and do that because it's really an awesome resource. I'll post a link in the description below to my account. If you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It'll motivate me to make similar videos. Comments or suggestions go down below. I do try and respond to everybody. If you haven't already subscribed and you'd like to, you can click right there on the screen coming up. And by subscribing, you'll get an email every week telling you I upload a new video. Thank you guys again for watching. Good luck and stay healthy.